purity, the whole issue of purity was looked upon as a joke. I mean, purity, what, what is purity? It's ridiculed, and, and people who were pure in their lifestyle were, were, you know, you know how they used to say, and they don't say it like they used to now, but I remember, oh, you're sanctified. Oh, you one of those sanctified people. That's a put down. That's really what they're saying when they don't even realize that there's no such thing as an unsanctified Christian. Did you know that? Because sanctified means that you're separated unto God. That's another Bible study teacher. But, that, but that's what people were doing. And don't you know some of you precious sisters or, or brothers, uh, uh, sometimes people look down on you because you're living for God. And heaven forbid if you're somebody that says you're not jumping in out of the bed with somebody, oh my God. What's wrong with you? Singles were sexually involved before marriage. It was a regular routine. And husband and wives were sexually involved outside of marriage. And homosexuality was condoned. And prostitution, by virtue of what I just told you about the temple worship, was very, very common. How many know it's common in this society as well? And I might add, brothers, and I'm... Sure that it's not uh, something that you would support, but you, when you think about it, prostitution would, would die overnight if you didn't have an appetite for it. And I think it's pretty obvious that if the men didn't have an appetite for it, well, I think I need to move on. I'm kind of meddling, and praise the Lord. But that doesn't deal, that's not you anyway. So praise the Lord, let's move on. So, so sex is a gift from God, but design, as your slide number nine says, for marriage. I'm going to show you in a minute that singleness is also a gift. Some of you all didn't know that, but I'm going to show you in the Bible where Paul supports that notion. But sex is designed to communicate mutual love between married couples those couples being male and female. To, for what? For pro the procreative process. That's one of them. So that children can be born in godliness. So that children can populate the earth and, and raised in the fear of God. In the love of God. But this Bible study is not going to just focus on the issue of homosexuality or transgenderism, but focus on what the Bible focuses on, and that is the Word of God doesn't differentiate between sin types because we're going to see in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, although sexual morality was at the top of the list, there are a lot of sins that God has a concern with. Somebody say amen. And so when you look at your slide, it says all of God's gifts can be perverted. How so? Well, gift of food and drink can become gluttony, alcoholism, and obesity. The gift of work. And this is one that I had a big problem with. Thank God I'm, I think I'm a little bit better on it. But one time uh, in my life, uh, my job was an idol. I didn't realize it, but it occupied the primary amount of my time. It, 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 it was predominantly the theme of my life. Later for my children, later for my wife, I was so steep in my job. I'm not the only one because I've counseled people. I, I think I have a little knowledge on that since it dominated several years of my life in the early years of my my uh, work career. But, but work is a gift, but it can become greed. It can become idolatrous. If you look at your next slide, the gift of sex can become lust. It can be selfish. It can be very self-centered. You know, uh, selfish is a kissing cousin of self-centered. Some people are self-centered and it becomes selfish. 
Self-centered is a person that looks at everything from their sphere. They look at you based upon what you do for them. They look at people, places, and things as it relates to how they or it benefits them. They look at God based upon what he can do for them. It, it, it's always a one-sided perspective. Say amen if you know what I'm talking about. That's why it leads to selfishness. And here's one. Uh, by the way, let me finish that. It can lead, uh, a gift of sex can become lustful. It can be selfish. It can be self-centered. It can become diseased, and it can become deadly. But here's one maybe you didn't think about. See, we're talking about the issue of morality here. Sexual morality. But we're also talking about the issues of immorality here in a moment. And actually, we're doing it right now. The gift of freedom can become careless or carelessness. It can become a, a, become a bad habit. Here's a big one. They say, bad company corrupts what? Good manners. That's the word of God. I've heard many times how good people, quote unquote, because of the company they keep have turned into quote unquote bad people but the freedom allows you to do either one 